I'll have to cut all that out. All right. Everybody, I just want you to reach your arms up into the sky and do a nice big stretch upward. Stretch out your upper back and stuff. Reach, 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 reach. Put your hands together into that prayer position. Put it back, back down to your heart. Squeeze your hands together so you're kind of pushing energy into your hands. Prayer position right in front of your heart. Push, 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 push. Big deep breath out. Breath in. And place your palms on your head. Both of your temples kind of just kind of push that energy into your head. Focus up. Okay. All right. So this is June. It is June 18th, 2023. Some consider it Father's Day. It's definitely a day for the guardians to celebrate guardians. And for those of those who are, have some time, a little bit of guardian training, which the theme is this month is rhythm. If you've been following the any of the social medias, I've been regularly posting, obviously on the Patreon also, just some codes about the rhythm that I've been downloading up until this point to kind of keep our brains in the topic, but not, I want to say, corner us into any specific direction because there's rhythm in so many parts of our existence. We're kind of just alive and kicking in a sea of rhythmic experiences. So I'm not trying to get like five tabs of acid on you about this, but that is what was occurring when I was doing the downloads was it was going to that level. <clears throat> it was like, well, this is a fractal and well, there's things are always pulsing. And I was like, okay, great. But what is it that we can work on to improve our understanding of rhythm kind of kind of reconceptualize that and solidify that in the guardian mindset instead of where we were sort of taught and what we were programmed to understand about rhythm. I'm kind of just bringing back that raw sensation of these concepts with the workshop just to kind of break away any sort of glass ceiling shackles, any sort of crust, crusties, dusties off of our consciousness. You may not even notice it's happening to you. And that's been my challenge. I've challenged myself to do so, to be a good dojo master, to be a good yoga teacher, whatever it is that I'm doing here and leading this class. It's sort of a workout for your spirit. So guardians know about the rhythms, the highlighted rhythms we're going to be doing and working with and conceptualizing today, our first bio rhythms, drum rhythms is the second one and the unknown rhythms. Okay. So we're going to focus in on those three things today. So first of all, when it comes to bio rhythms, I want you to think about your heart right now. So let's tap in with your heart really quick. Thank you, heart. I love you. I want you to tap into the heart of every one of your cells, the nucleus, please. Again, thank you. I love you. I want you to tap into your lungs right now. Take a deep breath in again. Feel how it shifts your heart when your lungs fill up with air. Obviously, now breathe it all out. Feel again what happens to your heart. You notice your heartbeat a little more when those lungs are empty and full. It's a constant, obviously, they're having a constant engagement, the lungs and the heart. They're in rhythm together. They must have each other. One thing that's not as visible with it comes to your rhythm that I really need to kind of bring back the attention to is your hormonal rhythms. Men and women obviously are functioning with a slightly different hormonal rhythm. As guardians, you need to know that first off. Second, you also need to understand the cultural issues that are happening to kind of block and confuse these rhythms because it is June. We're sort of having that discussion. We're also we're discussing hormones. We're discussing we're discussing male femaleness in general. So it's good that we're having just bringing this back up for today and for this month's theme is our hormonal rhythms. Understanding how the hormonal cycles begin in children and in the womb and so on, when hormonal cycles kind of begin, how they're influenced, which is usually by another hormonally present being in the room, can control the hormonal cycles of everyone else in the room, depending on how much how much hormones they're pumping, how heavy and <laughs> and activated they are in their adult hormonal form versus, you know, those who have 
um, going past that time where they're going into their menopausal times or people who are pre-hormonal uh, maturation. So if you are the most hormonally viable being in the room, you're going to be the hormonal rhythm in the room. And I just want you to remember that in case that that doesn't always occur to you. Just bring that one in, pull that one back in. Think about that more. Do some more research if you need to. I also need to make note about male's rhythm in specific. Men don't know a lot of the time. I've not been fully educated. If I wish there was on all of these very um, effective male chit chat podcasts that are coming up and becoming a huge part of our culture is men sitting around having a podcast recording about whatever they want to talk about. I would love to see more of them talking about their the hormonal cycles of men and how they shift throughout a man's lifetime. It would be very empowering for them and also kind of put them on in their own power. As somebody who worked in, I actually worked in dermatology and in skincare and in beauty, one of my first jobs, and I had a decent education in those things because the products we were selling had pharmaceutical grade level, uh, I want to say chemistry in them. So I had to know a little bit more. And of course, it does involve hormones. As you can imagine, the skin and so on I had to go back to hormonal knowledge. And the the things that we're putting on our skin and the things we're eating are also messing with our hormones and those cycles. But when you're applying things to your skin, how you're dealing with your skin, it's all been kind of studied in that area. And <laughs> actually, a lot of people in skincare know a lot more about hormones than you may you may think. So it's kind of funny how that these are getting compartmentalized, this knowledge. And knowing for men's hair loss actually is a big one. And I'm not sure why this is going to be a part of the rhythm workshop, but it is a concern for a lot of men. And truly your testosterone levels can get exerted too fast and your hair follicles will just retire out of creating, after creating seven raw and fresh hairs, the hair follicle will then retire. So if you have a high level of testosterone, your hair follicles will actually move through their life cycle faster than if you have a more subdued or leveled out um, testosterone. So we're we're often pushed, men are often pushed to really spike and maintain high testosterone levels. But men who naturally have that, you'll notice will begin losing their hair because they're literally moving through their follicle life cycle fast, super fast due to their high levels of testosterone. So that's another sign also just spotting out in the wilderness. If you see a man who has lost his hair, you will know that his testosterone cycle is active and it's quite active. He may not know that's why it happened. And it'll also begin uh, shifting his hormones. He may also have issues with his hormones continuing on and balancing his feminine and masculine and so on. So just spotting, wild spotting people out there. You can see a lot about their hormonal cycles too. And there's also ways you can help people. You can, the derm, the, the whole industry basically is trying to figure out how to slow down the men's hormonal cycle so their hair won't fall out so quickly. And that's like a huge, like multi-million dollar industry is trying to keep people's hair from falling out and kind of battling these biorhythms. Now, there is also lots going on about how chemical, the chemical shifts like with birth control and other things like atrazine, chemicals that have been put into the water supply. Most of you, I hope, have figured out some sort of way to filter your water to get the highest quality of raw water without all of this chemical city experimentation in your water. And if you are doing that, I need you to do that as soon as possible with whatever levels, just begin the process, begin the movement away from those hormonal disrupting waters. There's been a big issue. It's coming to the light again. They're talking about atrazine again, literally being able to switch the, the sex of frogs in the water. And that is a thing. So I just need to bring that in again with the rhythm workshop. Now, again, the last thing with your biorhythm with the body is your brain and the rhythms of the brain, which is a diurnal rhythm. It is also seasonal. 
And it also has to do with the solar cycle and our cosmic cycles. The reason why I follow the space weather is basically is to track the rhythms that are affecting our brain waves from the external experience, from our environment, because I wanted to go into psychology. I needed to be able to know how to track my clients in a logical way. And I needed to be able to prepare to have that defense for the best offense. I needed to be perfectly prepared to be able to help my clients defend themselves against the environmental factors that were throwing them off and disturbing their their dreams, their lives. That's when you see therapy is when your experience is starting to disturb you past the point where you can't achieve these simple goals in your day. That's when you seek help. So that's what I've been preparing for all of us and what I do publicly the best I can while also managing my own biorhythm insanity and experimentation. So another huge point that we need to just bring in is that please be conscious of the day, the rhythms of the day. Look up what circadian rhythms are. I did some posts about it this last month. There is for certain times of the day in which your your hormones, your organs and everything each in succession will be activated. And it will have certain surges of certain hormones, certain surges of electricity in a way because of whatever organ is turning on creates a new charge in your body. It's meant to wake you up, meant to match the diurnal cycle, the sun moving across the sky. So you can hunt and mate and protect yourself until the sun goes back down again and everything in our system kind of drops and we go into restorative recovery mode, which is essential. So if you're not giving yourself that restorative recovery mode at nighttime, you're not going to enjoy your daytimes anymore. And you're going to be stuck in an in-between state where neither day or night is affecting you positively. So if you're having that issue, please be sure to reestablish the importance of recovery of the vessel. And that has to happen at night. And closing off all of the ways for light to enter your eyes in the morning, blackout curtains, remove all of the electronics in the room, at least unplug them from the walls. And if you have a smoke detector or something on the ceiling above you, get that out of your bedroom also. Keep the smoke detectors by the kitchen in the main rooms. They should not be in your bedrooms, in my personal opinion, unless there is some sort of extreme need for safety. Those things are alive and those things are messing with you. I have I have to rip mine out of the ceiling in my office. I've been sleeping in here more and it's just horrible because I took the one out of my bedroom same problem definitely helped also if you have any smart meters on your home um we're also in that position and we do need to remove it and my internet connection just totally flickered in front of my eyes my computer just told me so in a way there is uh an intelligence that's working through these technologies also and reaching out to us and having their uh, opinions i want to say Everyone gets their opinion though. You just listen. You're allowed to listen, take in everyone's opinion and continue making decisions for your own restoration and your own vitality. And what you do with that restoration and vitality is reach out, be service to others or be available to the tribe with whatever task is at hand. Then you've done your job, you've rest restored and you're participating well. So You know, don't let anything else kind of draw on those reserves of you. If there is beings or entities or items that think that they're more important than your restorative cycle, put a huge, huge red flag over that because it's an anti-life belief. They're literally trying to have you value something over your own life force, which is counterproductive and you can't be of service if you're draining yourself. That's called martyrdom. You can't have any martyrs. So make sure that your biorhythms are as healthy as possible. And that's what I'm here to encourage you to do in this workshop. So on your notebook right now, if you have a moment, I just want you to write down one thing with your biorhythm that you want to tackle or do some more research on, please. Any of that, what I was just talking about, we're going to move on. 
Okay. One final thing before we finish the biorhythm, I just need to make a note that the solstice is going to be in a couple of days. Please be sure that the solstice and equinoxes are the most important days of your year. No offense to anything else. Even celebrating your birthday is potentially aging you and tricking your brain into aging you. So let's just go back to celebrating this, the solstices and the equinoxes together. If that's the only thing that we party about on our planet, we've basically solved all equality issues in my opinion. So if we get back to that. You're going to be much happier. I've been experimenting with it. I love it. My favorite thing. I'm so much happier with how I spend my time in my year. The seasonal shifts. If you notice that people are literally forgetting that it's the solstice and that we are literally on the northern hemisphere getting the most amount of the most amount of electromagnetic radiation that we can tolerate from our sun, which is going to clearly cause all of your biorhythms to respond and you're feeling activated and the world may be getting a little crazy. You have to not sweat it. You have to be like, this is this is happening on purpose. This makes sense to me. This is the most light we're getting of the year. Of course, the most activities can happen. And then please with the opposite, with the lowest amount of light that you get in the Southern hemisphere right now for their solstice, winter solstice, same deal. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling slow. You're feeling unproductive. Don't worry about it. It makes literal sense. You're getting the least amount of ions, the least amount of activity, least amount of negative ions, I should say. So negative ions, which are created from the solar wind, engaging with our upper atmosphere, negative ions just cause life in general to be activated. It's just the science of it. Negative ions cause activity. Positive ions draw activity, can suck the energy. So when the solar cycle, which is an 11-year cycle, which we're all studying together, at least me, when the solar cycle is at its most heightened, which means there's more sunspots, which means there's just some more explosions on the surface. There's way more matter shooting off. There's way more magnetic activity talking. There's a lot more going on on the surface of the sun. Very active. It's creating life. Basically it's becoming this cauldron of life creating and it's happening. It's being sprayed out into space. It's creating more negative ions for us and we're getting more activity. The world is changing. People are being motivated to make big decisions and choices. This is normal. We're literally watching a very simple Petri dish. We only have one star really actively that we can see doing this to us. Imagine living in a binary star system. If you could physically see our second star, some say we do live in a binary we, we can leave, we can table that for now. What you can physically see is just one. Imagine you do, you're on Tatooine and you do see two suns or whatever. There is, there, there is a whole other factor. That would be a whole other amount of physics that you have to account for, for biorhythms and all that fascinating stuff. So I'm grateful we only have to worry about one and it's cycling. It's 11 years. <laughs> Imagine you had two stars and they would cycle at different times. So you would never be, you would never, you'd never have the end of it. You'd have to adapt to live off of so much more energy in your environment. I think about these sort of things as we're kind of getting into that galactic understanding, we're getting contact from other planets. We're remembering past lives and our other planetary travels. Now we're getting access to that information uh, everywhere. It's just something coming to mind. So our solar cycle We've got a simple one. We've got one star. It does it every 11 years, nine to 11 years. We're, we're, we're hitting to the center peak of this activity right now. We're going to watch people all over the place, unconscious and conscious, be more active, doing more things. What are they going to do? Homie over here may build a fence. Homie over here may build a new country. Literally, that's, that's kind of the vibe. So Ah, oh, yes. Salt lamps. Yeah. Get yourself those salt lamps. So we want, we, if you're not feeling active, get yourself something that makes more negative ions or go outside. Clearly that's the most simple advice, but, uh, solar cycle it's happening. We're in it. Enjoy it. Play with it. We're at the peak right now. Keep enjoying how the new cycle is trying to insert relevancy about the sun and pretending to care about it because it literally has to. And oh, as these years kind of dissipate, I assume people are going to forget about the sun again on the mainstream. We're just going to have to keep going because 
the sun is also slowly expanding. So it's slowly getting closer to us. The Corona is slowly getting closer to us. It's expanding out from the center of the sun. So it's going to just slightly get stronger and stronger and stronger unless something happens to the sun and its gravity can pull that, that outer edge back in. And there's something about solar physics. I don't know of maintenance of the star. It's very possible. Uh, the fact that I'm even saying it probably means that we're going to come up with some clever idea about that in a few years. I'm sure something about that. It, when the need arises, I'm sure we're going to come up with solutions. But solar cycle, it completely impacts your biorhythm. We are completely, in my opinion, you, you have to, just to have to surrender to the solar cycle and study it. So that's what we do. So what do you do in that time when you're like, yes, yes, the solar cycle is super high. Um, I'm feeling it. We're feeling active. I've got all this energy. What do I do with all this intense energy, Alexis? Well, what do you do with this energy that's pulsing out of you, these intense rhythms? My guides want us to go into drum circles. They want us to go into construction, creating houses or destroying houses, like if you got to break things down that are rotting or built with uh, built with dangerous materials, tear those things down and build new things. So use all this extra ions with your muscles and build something. Um, the overall understanding of what a drum really is, is to resonate in a way when it's struck. It's sort of to prolong an activity. It It's it perpetuates an activity. It also receives and kind of amplifies energy, a drum. So when you're trying to understand a rhythm of something, you want it to amplify, you use a drum with a stethoscope, you put it over someone's heart. That's like a little drum. It's literally amplifying the sound of the heartbeat so you can hear it better. Your ears obviously have a drum within them. That's also the same deal. If you were trying to understand and pick up rhythms, you can create a drum and it will observe and it'll afford you the ability to witness a rhythm in a more clear and coherent way. So drums are an excellent tool. If you're even trying to see, you're basically trying to observe anything, create some sort of drum and you will notice even with cymatics, you'd have a pool of water sitting in kind of a drum like thing. It becomes a drum. You are witnessing the resonation of an impact. There is, uh, there's huge, huge, huge things where they're capturing just on the surface of this fluid the very smallest amount of light and the very smallest amount of impact. And when it ripples and resonates, it's easier for the computers to realize that something has happened. The neutrinos we're collecting from the entire galaxy, any neutrino that rolls past is now being observed by the technology on our planet. We're literally in contact with every neutrino that wants to move around. We're, we're fully in contact with the universe, with this technology, with the neutrino collecting technology. There's some in Antarctica, there's some in Japan. You can look it up. It's really cool how they built it. But this is another example of these drums and what they can do for us. Finally, I want to, to obviously notice that we have drums in space. There's the satellites. We have them on the surface. We have them in the sky. They have these antenna, these arrays, these dishes that capture these rhythms and disclosures happening. We're literally capturing the rhythm of what the stars and the very distant galaxies are giving off. And by the rhythm of what they're doing, you could see if there's planets moving in front of it, if those planets are inhabited, all of that stuff is possible. We're able to pick up all of these rhythms and understand our environment with this stuff. Our ears are doing it simply. And then not only are we able to receive, but we're able to provide. We are so amazing. We are sentient stars with arms and we can create rhythm whenever we want. You can tap your foot right now. You can hit the drum and create a beat and a rhythm that people from any walk of life could get into the rhythm of with you. It is the... It is the language of our existence is rhythm. So if you are having a hard time translating yourself or you're trying to make friends in a new area, please just get a drum. 
and maybe a spare. So you and another person can create this music, create this rhythm, create an environment, reestablish your dominance in the environment also, and reestablish your dominance as being a friendly being and somebody who wants engagement if you bring your other drum. I was hoping with this workshop, someone would be inspired to start a drum circle with their local area. That was the goal for this particular month. So please, if you have that capacity, if you have the capacity even just to make yourself a short TikTok or an Instagram reel or something of you laying down a rhythm that is just inspiring, kind of makes your heart go, kind of gets your, you know, gives you the goosebumps. It's something good, like lay down a line, lay down a beat and put that out there as a gift to the, to the other with your drums that you've collected and so on. You know, somebody's skin is on those drums. Potentially I have some metal drums, but somebody's you know, flesh is on that drum. Do them the honor, create the music with their flesh. You know, they live on, they can create environments, good times and fun with just their flesh years after they've left their body behind. There is a way to revere you know, drum making in the traditional way, and also be very conscious of not perpetuating violence against beings just because their skin makes great drums. So I have to just make that quick note when it comes to drums for the sake of my own karma and so on. I have to uh, just have to keep that, that cue. I have to keep that in the lineup here. So finally, when it comes to the rhythms that we're working on is the rhythms that need more attention in our lives. So again, with your notebook, please, I would like you to write down what rhythm maybe that I've mentioned so far that you want to implement in your lived experience right now for your own quality of life to go up. Um, what I would be writing down for me personally while you're writing is the rhythm of it's hard for me to describe this, but what I what an experience that I had that I want to recreate is drum circles for sure, but a powwow drum also, which is a basically family style, large, very large. It's like a coffee table size drum that you, multiple people can stand around with a mallet. And it's common in uh, North American indigenous culture. Uh, that's how I would, I engaged it with chief golden light Eagle a few years ago. And I didn't even participate with the drum because there was already plenty of people around it. There was no mallets left, but wow, it was a way to begin the day begin the ceremonies, end the day. It really opened and closed the room flawlessly. It allowed people to participate. And obviously a lot of people also sing and undulate over it as a way to add that melody of life over the rhythm that they're creating together. So although it is, again, a big fleshy uh, item, which does kind of make my skin crawl a little bit, I still am okay with it in a way too. And I want to welcome it into my life and have one of these drums. It's a big responsibility, also a big item. If you move regularly to have one of these things in your possession, a little bit of a commitment, but something as a tribal elder, a tribal leader that I want to bring into my life and keep working with for the sake of these gatherings and for the sake of the space just even clearing the space in my own home and standing and sitting with my own elders who used these drums and so on. And I see in my third eye all the time trying to contact me and play music and so on. <clears throat> so thank you for writing down what it is that a rhythm in your life that needs more attention. Ah, nice comment. Thank you for the comments about the the drums and that you are familiar with the ceremonial drums and the stories of how they're made. Because yeah, even just drum making has its own story. Every drum, drum should have its own story and everything or to a good craftsman. And it's a very, very unique and sacred craft. 
is drum making. And I'm not trying to gatekeep it or hold it away from you all. I believe that if you feel it, you do it. And that's kind of how, (laughs) and then people basically uh, explain themselves after. And that's kind of the human condition for the most part. So go off, go right ahead gather it up, do whatever you feel guided, just pursue what it is your soul wants to be in resonation with. What is What rhythms is it drawn to and wants to continue perpetuating? Because you're born from it and you need to continue creating it in order to exist quantumly in a way, this sound, this experience. So that's why we do it. So again, the unknown I just, I'm hoping, I always hold space for the unknown in my workshops because this is really what we're looking for is I'm great. I'm sort of shaking you up with the topic and I'm hoping that you will pluck this gem of unknown and the lesser known out of your energy and put more importance on it. Put it back on your trophy case, put it back on your shelf, put it back on your to-do list. That's as a, as maintenance That's what I'm here to kind of dredge up for you. So I hope that that worked for that exercise. Let's move on to the next slide. There's not many more slides. This is all active. So here is the activation. We're going to do an activation now. So we're going to begin with, there's three codes in this activation. So let's begin with code one. Everybody on the same page, just take a deep breath together, please. Deep breath in. Hold it, deep breath out. With code one, we're gonna activate your heartbeat. We're gonna quantumly connect to your heartbeat. So while you're breathing here, listen to just a few things I'm gonna say, and then I'm going to have you do the activation. So quickly, where is your heart? Please put your hands over your heart. Please make sure that you're feeling your heartbeat below your chest with your hand. If you're putting your hand on your chest and you're not feeling it, we're all going to wait for you to stand up right now and jump up and down, do some jumping jacks, 10 jumping jacks real quick, because you're dangerously low. (laughs) Your heartbeat needs a little bit of a kick. We're going to push, push some blood around. So please and thank you. Get up. Do 10 jumping jacks for me. And then you'll be able to feel your heartbeat. And if you can't yet, I need you to do 10 more. Make sure you're opening your mouth nice and wide and breathing big, loud, obnoxious breaths. Move that air in and out. Okay, excellent. So we're feeling your hand on your chest. You're feeling your heartbeat. The purest rhythm of our of our experience, of our little pulsing star that we are. If we are all, if we're all literal stars walking around, the center of your star is that pulsing heartbeat. You're feeling it? Good. Now make sure that both your hands are on your chest. Your both both your hands are feeling it. So your masculine and your feminine side, your sending and your receiving hand are combining, you're closing the circuit over top of your heartbeat by overlapping your hands. All right, close your eyes, please, and listen to my voice. Repeat after me. I bring together my quantum self. One more time. I bring together my quantum self. Feel that heartbeat. Feel how it responds to those words, okay? Feel what what your body just did in response to that. Did you feel kind of rush, kind of go through your body? Close your eyes now. One more time. I bring together my quantum self. Keep your eyes closed. Now I want you to feel as if there's almost like a spiraling vortex and it's spiraling into your heart space. You're seeing this spiraling and it's spinning, it's spinning. It's almost like a little tornado or like a little cyclone or like the drain of your tub where the water starts to spin as it's going down into the tub drain. 
I want it to feel like that over your heart space, this spinning, this cyclone. The great waters are draining into your heart space. <laughs> you're seeing the cyclone, you're seeing the spin. I just want you to send deep love into that cyclone, into that space and deep into your heart self, into your quantum heart space. With a few healthy breaths and your hands still over your heart, pull it in there, drink it in, drink in the love of the quantum pranic love, those negative ions, breathe them in. Into your quantum heart rhythm space. It is fully supported by us. It is fully appreciated by us and is fully recognized by us. Thank you for being the rhythm of my spirit. Thank you for connecting me with my quantum self. Thank you for allowing me access to my quantum self at all times. All right, we're going to hold space really quick, really quiet. So I want you to get really quiet. We're going to now listen to what your quantum self is going to tell you. So listen. Okay. So in that short time, I'm wondering if, if there was any visuals, any items, any suggestions, any desires, any people, places, things, anything that came across when you were tapping into your quantum self there. Of course, now I need you to write it down. I need you to write down what that thing is, please. And thank you in your journal right now to complete code activation one. All right, so for example, just to kind of, for the sake of examples, <laughs> okay, there is, the, excuse you, there's literally the tiniest little fruit fly I literally just tried to like fly into my eyeball or my mouth. <laughs> so that's another contact moment for my quantum self there. Be very gentle with that little tiny thing. It just It just bounced away into the oblivion. Could have been a little tiny fairy. Like they're very small my little fairy heart. So what I was seeing was actually a electric keyboard, which I have in my room, a piano. Personally, in this now moment of my quantum self, I don't have a familiarity. I can't just like whip out a keyboard song, but I have one in my office and I have it here to play with at any time, but I don't play with it. Basically, it just doesn't come up. So what I saw in that moment was this exact keyboard was an electric keyboard. So for me, obviously, that's a sign. Oh, Alexis, engage this item today for your quantum self. Engage it for the sake of your quantum self and then listen from that moment. That's the beginning of the communication with the quantum self. So in that moment, when I engage with that thing, I'm going to then tap in with my heart space again, feel into my heartbeat, tap into it, listen to it, be with it for a minute and see what else I get. What's the next thing? What is the next communication for my quantum self? That's what I'm going to do with this activation and this code personally. So I'm sure something else came upon your heart. Literally could have been anything, but that was the code one. So congrats. We moved through code one of this activation. Let's move into code two. So now that we've kind of engaged with our quantum self, which is also, you know, our memory and our projection into the future is kind of how we have to say it in the present moment, but really with the quantum, it's all happening. So you're just basically thumbing through a catalog of what is possible, in my opinion, in, in all of the now moments. So now that we're, we've kind of cracked open this catalog and we're activating this space, I want you again to put your hands over your chest, but I want you to now drum onto your chest, if you know what I mean. So I want you kind of like a gorilla would like bang his chest with his fists, just with an open hand. 
as gently or as hard as you want. Cause I know sometimes a little bit of impact feels really good on the body. So do what you need, but I want you to drum now your chest, um, the top of your chest until you are clear and you see a particular instrument or a drum. So pretty much all of us should tribally have a drum in our quantum memory or in our genetic memory, because it is such a prominent primal tool of us humanoids is to have a drum ceremony. So I want you to drum on your chest and I want you to pull this memory out of your quantum state. What drum, what peoples, what What type of drum are you seeing most clearly in this now moment when you're doing this activation from what tribe, what time and what part of space time is this from? Is it an earthly tribal drum? Is it something completely else you're seeing that's off worldly that, you know, maybe nobody's made one yet on this planet, but you see a picture of it clear as day and you could easily make one out of whatever materials, like it could go either direction. We're inventing in this moment potentially and reestablishing um, your memory and your ancestral bliss, I want to say, because drumming can be so, so much so a connection. So Again, if you're drumming on your chest and I've been talking too much, I'm just going to hold space right now for you to pull that in and write that down, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think that was good time. And it's also a really good way to release that extra tension that you have emotionally in your chest is to do that drumming on the chest. So that was a duo kind of duo activation. I kind of combined a couple on that code. Well, congratulations. You have finished code two of this activation. All right. Now I want you to just take a deep breath. Okay. The work is over. You are a very high achieving being. Thank you for prioritizing constant improvement and seeking out things that want you to engage the activity of improvement. Code three is your best self. May it be revealed gracefully. May it be revealed gracefully. May your best self be revealed gracefully. Now, if you know astrology, you realize that also there is many rhythms of engagement with the stars and the planets. And when they interact, some music that they make in the celestial realm, it clashes with each other. And therefore there is a bit of tension. And then sometimes the music goes so well together that is basically orgasmic or euphoric. And so as a living being, we get to experience both feelings. We get that extreme uncomfortable friction in our lives and we get that extreme level of resonance and harmony that is is this euphoric experience. Now, obviously, you're... You're designed, you're by, you're biologically designed to seek out the euphoric moments in that harmony, unless you've had particular traumas in your early years where you become more comfortable in a state of, of unresonance because it's a sign of familiarity from your home and from your life. If that is you and you would no longer want to attract a lack of resonance or this friction and you'd prefer to be living in an orgasmic, euphoric, resonant, orchestral, gorgeous energy, you're allowed to make that decision right now for yourself. What state would you be willing to then lend a hand to somebody else because you're in a good mood? 
Is it living in that friction space where two songs are playing, but they sound pretty clashy together? Or is it in that space where the music is so beautiful, it's basically becoming background music and you're dancing and you just want to talk to people and you want to smile? Two totally different realities you could make for yourself. I'm giving you this option in this code three to just make that intention a little more known to yourself on the quantum level about what it is you're trying to perpetuate and do. What music are you going to make for us through your frequency, through your field, through your choices? Are you going to be a euphoric orgasmic experience adding and attracting others to only amplify that feeling? I sure hope so. That's what we're going for with guardian training. So again, I want you to get into that monkey mode. I want you to start banging on your chest again for this final code. And I want you to say, I am aligning with my best self. May it be gracefully revealed. And just know that you're making a decision right now, truly, that you're going to now be approached with catalysts and experiences, you know, instruments or other players who are going to be along that part of your quantum experience in your best self, in the graceful revelation to your best self. And in trusting that process is trusting your invocation right now and trusting your ability to create your reality and choose what part of your quantum experience you want to engage in. So I want you to move the, the, um, your hands from your chest. I want you to very gently open your palms and I want you to move that, that pounding against your body gently all the way down to your belly. Um, technically, the belly is our drum. Uh, Laura Dantian, uh, you can make music with the belly just by hitting it. Makeshift drum in the drum circle. A belly honestly works. People do their thighs, you know, hands obviously, but you can make your body into a drum. You can make music just out of hitting your own flesh. If you really need to, don't forget that. So I want you gently, you're, you're kind of hitting your belly. You're making a little bit of a drum rhythm. Just see what rhythm you're going at right now. See how fast your hands are moving. Are you doing it slow? Are you doing it fast? Are you able to keep the rhythm? Have you been changing it? Have you been adjusting it? Does it even, excuse me, there goes the clearing for me, but <clears throat> does it even, does it hurt to touch your flesh? Does it hurt to hit your belly like this, even gently? Are you getting any pain? Okay, pause, put your hands flat, stop the rhythm, stop the beat, hold on to yourself, hold yourself, hold yourself still. This is the fun finality of the activation, holding yourself completely still. Close your eyes. Hold still. Deep breaths. We're going to center ourselves. I'm going to ask you a question, okay? So deep breaths. Center yourself. All right. What part of your body is most active right now? Where do you feel the most blood flow, most tingling? Place your hands on that part of your body. I want you to gently massage that area with the words, I'm accessing my best self. Massage it in. I'm accessing my best self. I am embodying my best self. 
Oh, nice sigh of relief. That feels much better. Congratulations, guys. That is the final code of this activation, the physical activation for this workshop. So ooh, know that that part is over. I'm not going to have you doing too much specifics onto yourself now. But definitely, I want you to write any notes now after this activation while it's fresh, any any comments, any comments, questions, concerns, even if you're like, ooh, Alexis, you missed this one part. I was thinking you could have said it. It would have been perfect if you added this one piece. That was for you. That is knowledge that you have. I want you to write it down. Please. I see your comments about the activation. So I'm just going to do a brief summary over the three codes again. Code one was our heartbeat code, and we brought together our quantum self. Code two was tapping into your ancestral resonation tools. So whatever it is that you resonate most, most with when you think of the word drum, what drum comes to mind? All of us will think of a different one. It could be from a totally different culture, a different time and time and space, but I need you to pick what that is for your soul. What's coming up most, write that down and potentially bring it into your life, like manifest this physical object back into your life to kind of close that ancestral loop and kind of continue carrying on that tradition. And code three was the best self code and that it may be gracefully revealed to you. We did this by first drumming our bodies uh, from the heart down to the belly and then sort of anywhere else that you wanted to drum on your body. And then I asked you to hold and massage then any area of your body that seemed to kind of feel the most rattled out of place when you were drumming on yourself. Any place that showed any kind of level of distress. We put a little extra love and understanding and massaging into that area so that our personal rhythm may become even more refined. Excellent. All right. So this is the journaling prompt, obviously, of this section. I hope that you are, again, with your journal. You may be doodling in it because you're waiting for me to say something else. But again, I may, I'm going to have to force you to do a little journal work. So if you've been resisting me this whole time also, and you have not written anything down, this is the stubborn portion of the guardian training where I have to force you to put pen to paper and do anything, literally. One of the hugest codes of my activation that will never go away are the words, write it down. And I say it in every one of my workshops, I'm pretty sure, because it is extremely important. We're quantumly alive and thriving, and there's so much rolling through our mind, body, spirit complex at all times. And if you do not start to write it down and create gravity and permanence to some of these things that are rolling through your mind, you're not going to be able to move on. You're not going to be able to realize refine your own rhythm, your own song. I deeply believe this. And I'm here with the codes and as your guardian trainer right now, being like, this is it. If you've been needing the sign, if you need that stubborn teacher, that's going to tape a, a writing utensil into your hand and force you to make some scribbles on a piece of paper just to allow the energy to flow in that new way, in that direction of your of your body, I have to be that person. If you were in my classroom right now, that's would be that every kid would be giggling because I'd be taping 
a pencil to your hand and forcing you to write something down right now. So what is it? You need a prompt. You need help. I want you to write down right now. What is it that you want to revisit so far about what I've said in this lecture? Anything. What is the most important note that you've kind of, that's stuck to you? What out of the orchestra of sounds that I've been projecting in you, in your direction right now, what instrument, what noise, what phrase, what idea is hitting the hardest? Please just write that down right now. Yeah. I'm Virgos, you know, I see, I see the comment. I've got, I've got somebody here in the workshop so keen. They've got colors of pens all over the place and they're using multiple colors. That's what I like to see. You and me, you know, we're on the same page when it comes to that. I'm holding space for it. Journal, journal how it is that you feel comfortable, but I'm holding space right now. You got to do it. Got to do anything. Even if you refuse to write words down and you want to draw a picture of what it is that hit you the hardest, even if it's just what I said about the sun, draw a picture of the sun, anything that you're going to be able to look back on this piece of paper and know exactly what you're talking about when you look at that thing. That's going to be a permanent activation for you in your time-space continuum. That's what we're going for. I'm knocking into your quantum self at these workshops intentionally. Good job. Snaps for everybody. Excellent work. Thank you. See, it wasn't so hard, right? Gosh, you did it. I'm impressed. And I'm going to pretend that every single person watching this who heard me just say that right now scribbled something down on any sort of writing, even if you drew it in the sand. Whatever it is, the exercise is that you just engage the drawing muscle in your brain and that quantum version of you, okay? I just need to do that to properly continue on with the codes of this workshop. You understand, okay? You got to do what you got to do. So I, I drew a hibiscus flower. For myself, just as an example, I attempted to try and copy that cherry blossom. Definitely looks a little more like a hibiscus flower, but I had to do it for myself too, just to be stubborn. Cause I was like, oh, I better not be the hypocrite in this moment. Wrote something down. I created something to remember this moment. All right. So we are in the integration period of this activation. Obviously, um, this image is of a diver a traditional diver in Japan that they traditionally dive down and collect, collect, um, basically they collect seafood at the bottom of, of the ocean, the ocean floor. And this is a deep ability to be able to hold your breath for a very long time and go down and collect this food and, and so on from the bottom of the ocean. And that's kind of what I'm doing in these workshops is I'm encouraging us to kind of take that moment, take a deep breath, dive into a particular topic, go down there, <laughs> find the oyster and find the pearl within. So with the exercise right now, that's what I'm asking you to do is that we're going to find that pearl within we're going to talk about what it is that you wrote down with your higher self right now. So we're going to integrate you. So again, close your eyes, please. I want you to take a deep breath like you're breathing in your own spirit so you have more of your own spirit inside of you to talk to. So breathe in your own spirit. Breathe in your own aura. Get it in there. Consume it. Get it inside you. Pull it in. Pull it in. Pull it in. We're integrating it in. Pull in that air. We're integrating all the codes that are necessary for us when it comes to the topic of rhythm. And as I'm saying this, there are horses trotting past my house. That's what is coming in through my greater aura. I, that's what I just manifested. 
What are you seeing? What are you feeling? What just happened to you? Did you just have three people on horses walk past you for no reason? The rhythm of a horse's hooves on the ground, you know, slow or fast could mean a lot. And we have the ancestral memory of such deep in there, many of us. Is it the rhythm of a horse's hooves that I'm integrating right now for my spirit? Is that what I've been holding at a distance, something that I truly want to experience, but I've been holding away from myself? I want to integrate that now. I would love to ride a horse again. I would love to be a friend and work with the horse beings again. Personally, that is a truth for me and my soul. So that's a great example of that, just populating for us as an example for this activation. For this integration. So for me, I'm integrating horseback riding and the rhythm of horses hooves in my soul, in my heart, in my spirit. And those of you lucky to engage that right now, my heart and my spirit go out to you in mutual bliss and joy. So what rhythm are you integrating right now? I've, I've uh, dated a lot of, <laughs> I've dated a lot of musicians. I didn't know they were musicians until you find out. It's one of those. <laughs> Some of them was like, oh, you know how to read music. Oh, you know, you know how to play. Oh, and for me, it's intimidating because I don't know how to play an instrument any sort of way other than a drum, of course. And even that I'm not even the best at maintaining a beat. I'm a dancer. I'm good at taking the rhythms as they come and literally improvising them into dance. And I could literally improvise dance for hours without missing a beat, without getting confused. It's a skill that I have personally. That is another example, the integrating rhythm and your particular strengths with rhythm and those things with rhythm that you want to integrate better. These are just ways I'm trying to prompt you trying to prompt you with your breathing, with your meditating, you're absorbing it in, you're pulling it back in, you're owning it. Another thing that I'm seeing in front of me is the rhythm of a bird's wings and how they need different rhythms to fly. They undulate through different rhythms to get height, speed, um, obviously to traverse between and through. The rhythm of their wings is essential. We're integrating that. We're integrating that. Excellent. Okay. So this is our objective. We're going to be putting this to work now. So we have a new goal together. We're going to set a new goal together right now when it comes to the theme of rhythm. So hopefully you've got your notebook out. Uh, pick a new color pen if you need to engage yourself here, but we're going to write ourselves down a new goal when it comes to rhythm. Specific, specifically, what sort of rhythm are you trying to engage again? What is it that lights you up when it comes to the topic of rhythm that you want to engage in? What is it that your inner child wants to do when it comes to rhythm? Okay, writing that down. So you can write multiple down, but I'm just, if you just have one, that's all good. We're at least getting you to one. Okay, so we've got our goal, our new goal that we're going to play with, our new rhythm that we want to engage with more. It could be an old rhythm. Like, you know, we were talking about those drums. It could be like, go buy a, a drum that your grandpa used to have and used to play for your powwows and like bring that back into your life. That could be your new goal. And I just want you to know that if you're trying to put some sort of blockage between you and this thing because of money or affordances, you're blocking your, your literal quantum self. Just know that this item and this achievement already happened. It already is happening in the quantum. You're just aligning yourself with it because that's where you want to hang out right now. So all the, all your experiences are happening. We're just, uh, you're just orienting yourself to go into that direction in the now moment. 
and everything can be given away for free. People love to give things away for free. Some people have way too much stuff and they need somebody to take it off their hands. That's sort of the energy I want you to open up when you want to receive stuff and you're having a hard time wanting to manifest money to pay for it or whatever. You can literally even put an advertisement on Craigslist looking for blah, blah, blah thing or Facebook marketplace. I'm looking for blah, blah, blah thing and welcome it into your, into your field. Post about it. Talk about it all the time. It will attract it to you. Eventually it will work. Eventually it will work. Eventually it will work. So just go ahead. Don't stop yourself from what it is that your new goal is that you want to engage with, with rhythm. Do it. You know, horseback riding. I don't need to buy a horse tomorrow to fulfill that. I could manifest a visit. I could go chase down these people riding a horse right now and be like, listen, you know, I need this. Like, can I hang out with you and your horse? Like easy peasy done. Like it could be that simple. So I want to don't let this stress you out. This is, this is supposed to be fun. So you got your new goal down. It's down. I've got two horseback riding rhythm. Need that more in my life and DJing and rhythm of like actually doing mixing music and working with that rhythm play. I want to do more of that too, personally, for fun, for my spirit, to increase my euphoria of life. Excellent. So now we've gotten the next step, which is we're going to play with this new goal. So this is tomorrow's action. So the way that we're going to play with this is that we are all going to make ourselves a promise right now that tomorrow we're going to engage this goal in some capacity, any sort of thing. Even if you just look up a YouTube video of this object, even if you just do a little research about this online, if you talk to one single human being about it, you're already playing with this new goal. You're already bringing an action towards your goal. That's all you need to do. So please, right now, you will have your phone out, or if you have some other technique in order to give yourself reminders, the only thing that works for me is putting it in my cal- in my calendar, in my phone, and putting the alerts on. I put both. I put like the 30-minute alert, and I put the hour or two-hour alert on with pretty much everything I put in my calendar because I need multiple alerts. We're operating in a timeless space, trying to work with time, it's tricky. So I want you right now, if you have your phone, you have your calendar handy, or just a big, cute, sticky note that you can stick to your bathroom mirror, or you can stick it to your forehead, stick it to your fridge, stick it to your car window, stick it to whatever it is that you do commit to do every single day, even if it's healthy or unhealthy, stick it to that. So even if you're trying to get rid of a bad habit, but you know, you do it anyways, um, stick the sticky note to that thing. So you're doing your bad habit and your new goal, at least, at least I'm not going to be an enabler of course, but I know people and I'm also not trying to think of you as, you know, anything that you're not. So you go ahead and be flawed in your own way, but we're still going to get to play with something new. And eventually it could take over your whole life and be your whole new thing. It could take over this unhealthy habit because you're going to love this other thing way more. Like imagine, you know, oh, all of a sudden you get to horseback ride every day instead of watching this really terrible news segment that you watch every day. Like you just switch it up, put the sticky note on your remote, put it on your TV. Oh, I'm going to turn on the TV and watch this annoying newscast that I that kicks up a bunch of loosh in me because they're talking about the most horrible eye-catching thing they could possibly get for views. And I'm going to play with my drum. And I'm going to look up horseback riding lessons. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to do that. So tomorrow's action is the play we're going to do with this new goal. Now... The month objective, as this guardian training is a monthly objective, this is a monthly shift that I'm incurring in everybody with one goal in mind, one theme in mind. 
So this is the training portion. So I want you to write down what it is your monthly goal. So by the 18th of July, how do you want to have this new goal moved along in your life? What is it that you want to achieve? By this time next month, do you want to get on on a horse? Just be like, I promise myself in the next month, my objective is to get this new rhythm in my life is I'm going to be on, I'm going to be working with a horse. I'm going to ride a horse by this time next month. I'm going to put that down for me. Month objective for your guardian training. It could be buying that drum or acquiring that drum, I should say. Whatever it is, that's the training portion. So every day you're going to be making an action towards it. And by July 18th, you're going to have achieved something. Just literally, you've already achieved it. I've literally already pushed you to achieve it in some capacity versus what you're doing to push yourself alone before. So we're already there. So just make this the objective, make this fun. This is we're we're supposed to be making fun goals for ourselves too. You're you're quantumly alive. You could literally the most be the most bored out of your mind. Like, come on, I'm trying to give you something to engage you, make you want to be here, make you enjoying the Garden of Eden we're playing in. That's all. So your your objective is the next thing with this goal. So this month. What is your goal by July 18th? What are you going to have engaged with this rhythm objective? But now let's push it out to a year. By this time next year, what is it that you want to know that you did for yourself when it comes to engaging this rhythm in your life? By this time next year, I definitely want to have achieved a, a single drum circle. I've been in one, participated in one, potentially created one for myself and like hosted one, I'm putting that on my year objective. Write that down. Mm -hmm -hmm. Excellente. So finally, when it comes to making this new goal we're creating today with engaging whatever it is, this rhythm that you feel like you want to engage more for inc increasing your bliss, your euphoria. Okay. Now we've got, we're going to your lifetime goal. So imagine you're like, you're your oldest you're going to be, you know, you've spiritually matured. You've experienced all the things that you want in your life. You're literally going, you know what? I think I might just, you know, rainbow body out of this suit and go hang out with my friends in Andromeda you know, finally, they've been asking, they've been asking, all right, I'll, I'll go hang out over there now. You know, you're at the end of your life and you're storytelling. Like, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to leave some stories behind. Let's hang out with the kids and let me tell them a couple things about what I did when it comes to the topic of rhythm. We're passing on your knowledge now that you engaged what rhythm, whatever rhythm you engaged, whatever, whatever euphoric rhythm you found in your own body, mind, spirit. We're at your storytelling period. We're, we're storytelling already about your achievement with this thing right now. What, what is the story that you'd want to tell? What is your ideal story with this rhythm? What is it that you want to tell it in this lifetime, you know? I want to tell the story that I engaged with many drum circles, with many different people around the world, with many different drums and the spirits of the animals and the ancestors that became and were a part of those drums. And I want to tell stories about how I engaged more with horses and other musical people and created in musical environments that created healthy, happy, euphoric hearts. Those are the stories I want to be telling. If that gives you an idea. And write that down, please. What's a goal story that you want to be telling? It should look a lot like what you've been writing down for this sort of goal. Your tomorrow's action objective. The month's objective goal. 
and the year's goal. It should all be kind of the same thing. But if it's not also make a note of that, make a note of that. Like, Oh, I, I definitely made you think at a different portion of your life where you may feel a little more responsible, a little more grounded. <laughs> My uh, canines are, I think, activating something else <laughs> for us too. So if you guys have dogs in your life, just a sweet final note on this when it comes to your lifetime goal and your storytelling. I just want you to have the confidence that a dog has in a way when they feel the right, when they feel threatened or they feel like their space and their boundaries are being impeded upon when it comes to these goals that you just kind of like, you kind of bark and kind of reestablish your space just as much as anyone else wants to try and reestablish themselves into your space, reestablish their dominance in your space be like the dog, be like, um, excuse you. I'm also allowed to just be, be as obnoxious, be as loud and be as present as you are. And if you're having that sort of issue, I hope at the end of this year, you've moved into a space where your rhythm is, you know, your rhythm and your boundaries are being properly supported and your noise <laughs> is just as important as anyone else's. In my opinion. So take that note. <laughs> I'm going to improvise with that. <laughs> so here is just another kind of, I want to just solidify this in your head a little more, just to show you the impact that you can have on your life right now. I mean, starting tomorrow when it comes to this goal. So tomorrow you're going to make one change when it comes to engaging the rhythm of your soul and the dreams and the things you're trying to manifest. So you can story tell and be proud of the stories you're telling and the rhythm you continue to perpetuate when you get older and wiser, you know? So tomorrow you make one change, big deal, but that has a cascading effect. If you repeat that change the next day, you've successfully created a new rhythm in your life period. You can choose again to repeat that the third day and you've sustained the rhythm in your life. You really have created something. But what also can happen when you bring in new rhythm and you re begin repeating a new thing in your life, you have to then review. You have to review the change that you made and take accountability for it. So if you've changed something in your life and you've perpetuated it a couple of days and you've noticed a change or an, it has affected something in your life, potentially negatively, including other people. So, you know, if your change is that you want to blast music every day because that's how you engage rhythm, but you live with somebody who's hypersensitive and really doesn't enjoy loud music, you need to take accountability for that change that you, you're making for your own rhythm and continue, you know, being aware of the impact you're having, of course. And that may also inform you like, okay, I need to do this in another location or I'm not compatible with this particular person or environment and to keep my rhythm strong, to keep this goal moving, to story tell proudly about what I did with my personal rhythm expression. I need to take accountability for this change and make some changes. That's gonna happen. Also, you will have a, like I said, a mutual impact. So you make a new change in your life. You may make a change in someone else's life. And it could be for the positive. And that could mean great compatibility and a great sign that your rhythm, your truest rhythm and your truest expression is being appreciated and supported in your environment. So definitely take that feedback and enjoy it either way, because it's informative. It's informative because it's your truth and how your truth is reflecting back on you is how you can readjust your environment to, so you may express your truth 
and be free because we don't want any blockages in your own expression. That's how we get sick. That's how we get sick. So your biorhythms need to come out of you. They need to. And if there's something in your environment that you're subduing and you're contorting your rhythm around, there's something wrong and you're going to hurt yourself doing that. You got to really let yourself be. The drum doesn't care. You hit the drum, it makes the noise. That's That should be us too. You're, you're expressing yourself truly. So when you make that change and you make a new rhythm in your life, there is a cascading effect. Some people like myself <laughs> may have written down more than one goal when it comes to the rhythm shift and the storytelling of your rhythm that you want to make sure you're perpetuating. So tomorrow, you know, you may make this change and then you may make a new change or a secondary change. And you may want to continue making changes because gosh, you haven't been expressing yourself honestly at all. And you really have a few things you need to re-engage for you to express yourself, to get that stagnant energy out. You may go for another change. You're like, oh, I implemented this. Good. I'm good at that too, where I can implement something and then I can do a new thing and I can do a new thing and I can keep adding new things and I will remember them all and I can keep up with it all. Not everyone's like that, but I'm accounting for that in this graph. So we're making that change tomorrow. And then you go, wow, this change feels so good. I'm ready to make this other change. And you engage in new change. And you change your, you just changed your song and the noise you're making from your spirit significantly in two days. If you go ahead and go into day three and you make another change, that means you've completely you changed your rhythm and your experience three major ways in just three days. It's going to change your song. It's going to change your aura can change you in very rapid ways. If you're repeating the change, instead of going on to making new change, you're like, okay, I did a couple changes instead, and I'm going to just repeat these. You're still creating that new rhythm for yourself. So you can see here that we've sort of, we've got a new rhythm with two different techniques. Even if you just want to do one change, or if you want to change a new thing every day, I'm just highlighting how quickly that can cascade and shift your vibration. I hope that this kind of gave you a visual and kind of broke it down in a simple way because some people also give themselves a lot of tasks to do all at once. Um, I've done that also. And you can you can really, you know, when you change your song that much that quickly, your biorhythms and so on can get thrown off. And you need to adjust within one moon cycle is usually the best way to do it for your hormones, for your heartbeat, for your blood pressure, all that stuff. The moon is really an excellent way to kind of key that in. So within one moon cycle, which we're doing right now, it's a new moon. So you and me making a new shift right now is extremely common, extremely normal, it very much in the rhythm of our biorhythms in our environment, our shared environment. Thank you to the moon for that. Thank you for the timing of today. You may notice that there's other people doing workshops today. There's actually quite a few leaders and spiritual sort of teachers in our community feeling guided to make a shift today. And with the data that I just saw, it makes sense to me. Like we, you and me, we're literally talking through, I am assuming a timeline shift that's happening right now, an energy shift on earth casually. And this is sort of how I'm structuring that potential for us and kind of giving our minds a direction to go with what this shift is doing. Overall, when it comes to rhythm, the idea is to play along with the music that's sort of happening and gently find the BPM that you're kind of operating at and be more in the area with other people operating at that beats per minute at the rhythm that you're finding yourself operating at. Be amongst those beings. It's much easier to work with people who are operating in the same beats per minute that you are than it is to operate with people who are hitting a different rhythm at different speed. Inter the internet and the algorithms is actually allowing us to operate and find people that their brains and their rhythms work alongside your, your own. 
a lot better. And if you aren't having that experience right now, the internet is providing you with the ability to connect with those people right now. So whatever social media you like, look up the hashtag of whatever it is that you're rhythmically bringing into your life right now. I want to bring more horses into my life. So I'm going to look up horses, you know, <laughs> horses, horse care, conscious horse, horse whisperers, that sort of thing. That's kind of the category I'm going to engage more to do that favor for myself and my lifetime goal and my storytelling by this time next month sort of goals. I would encourage you to do the same. And what I want to just invoke in all of us is comfortably reliable, good vibe tribe energy. Comfortably reliable, good vibe tribe. Beings who are in a similar rhythm. So you may feel safe, supported, and mutually inspired that the music that you're playing is vibing with the music you're surrounding yourself with. In the simplest, simplest terms, the music that's truest for your spirit, for your heart, that you're finding that within yourself and that you're also finding others who are playing in that same beats per minute, that same rhythm that you are. Essential. Another wonderful way to do that is to start posting music that you like and see who responds because they are literally in resonance with your mind, body, spirit complex and where you are quantumly, that person. Because they're like, oh, I love that song. You're like, yes, you do. We love that song. We are in resonance. And this is a deeper, deeper understanding of our spirit, our mutual spiritual compatibility. Who doesn't want that? So if you've been having issues finding your rhythm, finding the rhythm mutually with others, I really hope that this workshop gave you some keys, some codes, some activations, some inspiration. With all of my love and all of my own passion, I'm very excited that we did this topic this month. I, I was euphoric when I downloaded that this was going to be the theme for the month. Because again, I love musicians, I love music, but I love rhythm in so many other ways as a dancer, as an acrobat, as even a painter. Rhythm has been such an essential part of the healing effort of so many people. If you realize that you're kind of coming out of resonance, a solid drum beat just is so sacred. There's such a reason why we do it. The actual air that the dis, that these drums displace or these speakers displace actually moves our field. It can actually reorient our atoms. And so please, if you don't have a drum, get one, get one. And whatever one you're guided to, just get one. I have a few drums. I have a hand drum, a native hand drum that was left for me by my indigenous previous owner of where I was renting in Sedona. She left it behind. It was my first drum gift that I ever got. It was given to me by the universe and I play it and it's full blown skin. And it, I don't even know where it came from. I don't know how she got it. But in a way, <laughs> it makes me feel almost more safe using it because I have the originator whose it was is more culturally acceptable for me to have received this drum from this woman because she is identifiably more indigenous than I am um, by just the phenotypes, by just looking at my face and having this drum and even any of us having a drum can have that controversial controversial cultural perspective. And so how you're receiving your drums, how you receive your instruments is also a spiritual engagement and is also a culturally sensitive topic. But I want you to know that quantumly, you are everybody. 
You are every drum. You are every skin cell on that dried drum. You are all of it. And if you have the right intentions of creating harmony, joy, coherency in our collective, then the drums are going to find you. These tools and these instruments and these purposes are going to find you. And just approaching it with the most respect and reverence is all you can truly do. And someone who truly understands drumming and rhythm and music, they're going to know you have a rhythm if they can hear you drumming. And at that point, it really doesn't matter because what they'll instinctively want to do if they're truly a musician is they're going to want to just play with you. They're going to want to build on your rhythm. They're going to want to join your foundation that you're creating. And that is the cultural bridge that we're also engaging. So for June, for summer, for this solstice, cultural bridge, rhythmic bridging, bridging across time, space, and and uh, all the taboo and so on. That's kind of the goal here, the overall goal for me in this workshop. So I just want you to have a moment with your journal, final moment with your journal, please. And then I'm going to read your comments that were here in the workshop really quick in case there's anything else I need to add to this container out of respect to the other guardians who are here training with me right now in this Zoom call. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for holding the space with me and helping me do this project. You and your presence here and your encouragement have inspired this and this recording that someone else may be hearing just so you know, these people who are here with me right now are fully responsible for this recording. Their donations to my Patreon, their support with their words and their kindness and their presence in my life, keeping up with my personal rhythm and in being in coherency with it, that I, I hand it off to them. I have a clap for them. I'm so grateful for you all. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I'm holding you close and you are intimately a big part of my spirit and my growth as a spiritual person. And yeah, there's no denying that. And you are part of my story. And I'll be storytelling about you and the your presence here for the rest of my life. So thank you. Thank you for being here. It is quantumly mind-boggling to me at some portions when I think about it and I get emotional. So thank you so much. And with your journal, please, your final notes about what is it that you are trying to attract with your rhythm, your true raw music that your spirit makes. What is it that you're trying to attract to yourself? Pure love. That's what I want to write down. You can write that as well if you want to add that to your, your list. Pure love. And with those people in rhythm with my spirit, I'm going to go back and read the comments right now and see what we've got. Ah, electric beds would have issues with rhythms. Yes. Mm-hmm. Any sort of thing that's electronic also, the electronic rhythms, which can be perfectly replicated and undulated over and over and over to a, a mathematical degree that is basically impossible for organic life because of our own heartbeats and the way that we can, how quickly we can move our own arms, basically. With electronics, we've been able to create rhythms that are in a way non-human and not, not capable for our bio rhythms to mimic other than our brain waves. And at least if it's, if it's just slow enough for our brain, for our eardrum to capture, then we're good. Then we're good. But if you can't copy it with your own arm hitting a drum, if your own arm can't copy that rhythm, then I would be very careful engaging it. And that may be a test if a certain electronic music or thing is actually good for you. If you can't copy it with your own body, then it may be something you want to stay away from. It's just one final comment. I'm really glad you brought that up. 
I almost forgot to put that in the workshop, but this was definitely a more focus of your bio rhythm and bio harmonious rhythms. And then there's a whole other thing about frequencies and pulses that are not healthy for us. And it is because we just genuinely can't resonate with it, with our own movement. And so we have to stay away from those things in order to sustain ourselves, to be, to be safe. So remove those things out of your life. If you can, as a major part of this guardian training workshop, please remove unhealthy electronic rhythms out of your life. Uh, grounding pads do grounding rhythm is another wonderful way to achieve grounding. Excellent note. Thank you. Excellent note. Yes. Another wonderful way to achieve grounding is having your rhythm on in your feet and putting it through the earth. So stomping your feet on the ground, creating a rhythm, dancing with the rhythm. That is how you ground and charge your, all of your cells. So they have all the proper amount of electrons that they need. So they don't become, you know, cannibalistic basically. And we having issues with that. So if you're having issues with your health, it's time to go start stomping your feet on the ground and getting yourself reintegrated with the earth's rhythm and grounded out all that extra nonsense out of your body. Ah, uh, Stacy says she goes out into thunderstorms and plays back with the thunderstorm and that your husband's in making drums in a surgical during your surgical recovery. Wonderful. And paying attention to whose skin is being implemented for these drums. And obviously the story behind it, drum circles, anipi ceremonies, funerals, weddings, creating drums for all these things. Wonderful. Sun dancers, the moms, the dads. Um, yeah. I also noticed that a traditional, uh, I want to say maybe traditional North American indigenous, but honestly, I think it is sort of like a, I've noticed it, it is a thing amongst all drum playing society, sort of tribal thing. I've noticed that as well, that women aren't the ones playing the drum as much. It is actually maybe a more uh, male activity. And I would say it's just genuinely because of their testosterone levels and the amount of power that they're plowing through their arms and their uh, electrical body, like they're building houses or they're playing drums and keeping up a rhythm. Like if you've never even played drums, it's actually very hard on you to keep up a rhythm for quite some time. It is a, it's a quite the activity and it doesn't, it does make sense to me that women or people in their feminine state aren't as in wanting to engage in hitting a drum over and over that is that is definitely more of a masculine activity but wow if you have a buildup of masculine energy in your body from even being suppressed by men your life in your life getting a drum and joining a drum circle and just even just doing one as a woman for myself was extremely freeing and oh i was euphoric i literally had a smile like it was a high you do get a high from doing it and even my hands, like the the pain in my hands from the drum, like hitting it over and over and over to just keep this rhythm going, to keep that drum circle going, to keep that song like evolving. It was hard work, but it was clearing for me and I needed that. But uh, would I prefer to dance and be more in the feminine, the melody of the rhythm of the men we're creating? A hundred percent. That's That's definitely where I'm more comfortable and, but I need it. I need both. We need both. And I'm here to encourage all of that, all of that to work out together, get that vibe back. I need that. At events, I have been to only women were playing the powwow drum. I got a, a message, which is wonderful. Again, there is, if you're, um, I think if you're not understanding the biological basics of a male and female body and how we push chi out of our bodies, it can become like this whole other cultural thing. And like, you know, it can be used as like aggression or control over women and men. 
even tribal music, tribal dancing, all of that has, it's, it's can become such a social drama, but I'm pushing us back from that. I'm looking at us as pure, like just pulsing energy bodies and how they function. <laughs> That's how I see people. And I want people to be able to do what they want with their pulses, with their rhythm, with their power in a productive way. Um, okay, so we've got some pictures when we were doing the journaling with some physical pictures. We've got people drawing yourself or others in a circle of trees drumming to the ancestors. So you're by yourself engaging the drum with the trees and in your own spiritual walk in a sort of way to contact quantumly the spirit world also excellent use of the drum. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Play for your ancestors play as a way to get into a meditative state to access the realm. You know, if you've seen the movie black Panther, they do have a way where they take a substance, like they take this flower and it, they go into a state where they're kind of in a trance state or they go into a deep sleep, which they enter the spirit world with, which there's plenty of other plant medicines. This is not, this is not out of the realm of understanding these plant medicines can t literally shift the rhythm of your, your field through taking it temporarily and put, put you into a different density or the other realms and you can engage them temporarily until your heartbeat kind of re recorrects itself and gets back to its more bio bio normal state. But with taking these substances, you can be shifted into different rhythms into the spirit world. And that's another reason why they do the drumming and why this has been continuing because it does shift your frequency and it can actually shift you and the people you're with into a different frequency, into a different reality. So it is kind of like a, a tool that is very effective in shifting your vibration right away. So excellent notes. Thank you for bringing that up, Guardians. Uh, the clacking rocks in Hawaiian dance class that came back in massage school too. Collecting stones. Interesting. So creating rhythm with rocks. Fascinating. I actually don't know about that one as much. So I'm grateful you brought that up, Stacey. Um, it's, I look forward to connecting to you too. And the rhythms of our females. <laughs> uh, yes. And the rhythm of procreation bringing brought up too, and how even just creating a rhythm is how that expression of those creative juices are created, how life is encouraged just through that rhythm. And a lot of the themes through guardian training, I do know often come down to sexual reproduction. I did a whole theme about sexual reproduction because it was such a prominent thing that needed to be kind of discussed and re re-energized is that sort of sexual energy and the guardians, obviously just having a discussion about it, talking about it, bringing in that concept, kind of solidifying that concept a little more just to know that we did it just to do that maintenance. But of course, yeah, that rhythm of like, you know, a sexual encounter in order to create that euphoric explosion and in order to create that literal action potential and that energy to literally spark life from like the, the void to like create that life, that spark, which is a physical light. You can physically see it when it does happen. When those two cells meet, the two sex cells meet, it creates a spark of blue light visible. And uh, this, <laughs> it's such a powerful quantum light that and it's kind of like a collapsing star or something it it could it could burn your retinas if you look at it too often the the scientist that was doing that looking through a microscope and watching putting the two sex cells together and watching the light form as this life was being born you know they were literally getting like sunburned face like they were their retinas were getting damaged because of the light so it's like it's it's that important so i'm glad you brought that up too
and um, the moon cycle and everything. Yes. Also the standing people, the trees matter and shifts the frequency of the sound. Yeah. The trees engagement with us and their rhythms are important. And I agree their rhythm and their needs are also very important to me. And to have that in consideration where you're, where us humans are making a bunch of noise um, in respect to all the other beings around. So it is nice for some, for an example, very crude, but where Burning Man is literally in the middle of a dried up lake bed, there's no trees in sight. Uh, maybe a couple grasses potentially at the very edges of the mountains and so on. But it is an area in a way where there is a lot of rhythm and human rhythm experimented with and played with, but there's no trees or any other, I would say any other entities in the vicinity to be affected by it and disturbed by it, unless they're like some sort of ground dwelling animals or something that live in the desert out there. But I don't even think that's the case because of the material that is the ground. So consciously, I agree with that particular location and that that way to participate with our human rhythm and work with it, experiment with it. A butterfly just flew in front of me, a beautiful one. So just as a signal there, um, if you have any other environments like that in your vicinity, in your area, those barren areas, it's kind of funny because sometimes we'll see a barren area and we'll be like, oh, we need to bring trees here. We need to bring life here. And and to me, now I'm seeing it as an opportunity or as a playground for us humans to experiment with our rhythms and our healing without bringing in or in it, uh, annoying any of the standing people or any of our, you know, friends and family, the other entities running around in this heavenly Eden that we're clearly capable of taking great care of. We have the tools, our hands, our minds, our ancestry all of it. So just keeping that in mind also for this workshop and those locations, instead of seeing them as flawed or as missing something, maybe see them as a gift and potentially use those spots for creating a human rhythmic experience for people. And I just saw a flash. I think it was an airplane, maybe catching the sunlight ray, but I just got flashed again as a synchronicity. So just as a perspective change. I hope that that gives you a little something, something. Uh, yes, even the children in utero <laughs> experiencing the mother's rhythm very intimately, very important. Yes, there is the, if you are interested, by the way, I mentioned my other workshops. If you're interested in watching any of the other guardian training workshops of the past, you simply have to go to my free open YouTube channel, my Ascension Diaries YouTube channel. There's a whole playlist of them in order. And you can see the progression from my first one to the present one. They're all around this length of time. So obviously it's going to be a while. Uh, I was attempting to create all of these, then be packaged into sort of a, basically a course or a, an Essential Diaries class or a big workshop package is kind of like a light code and upgrading package that I could sell as one big thing. Like here, you want some of these codes. I have all of these work through these workshops are kind of like books, work through these audio books and get all these codes and then you can catch up with us basically and, and join the next workshop and so on. So that's kind of how I'm making them, uh, but they're all for free right now. So go ahead and watch and enjoy whatever codes that you think you want to work up on the most, whatever's resonating with you the most. Next review, if this is your first guardian training workshop you're seeing of mine, please go back. I really made these as a labor of love. If you like the teaching style, this is the first one I've done with a PowerPoint res presentation. The other ones is just me. You can see me visually speaking and talking and emoting if you're, if that's how you learn, but I really like the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation option today. I really enjoyed that too. So I'm looking forward to making more guardian training workshops. We're going to have another theme next month and for July and just for total transparency with you all. I got the message that I have to take a break from doing a physical workshop 
in a live physical workshop in July. Uh, apparently I'm going to have a lot more personal work and personal, you know, realignment that I need to do just as like a professional. It's like, I need to take a professional month off a professional day. I've been doing these, I think now for over six months, I think this may be the seventh or eighth one of these, but I just tapped in with my team today and my guidance and my own growth. And it was like, Alexis, you need to take July off. And I was like, okay. And I wasn't expecting that. So when it comes to the guardian training workshop, we're not going to physically meet in July. So of course, cause I'm a workaholic, I'm going to work around it. I'm going to be releasing content along with the theme that you can do without me. So I'm going to keep messaging everyone on Patreon, whatever the theme is going to be, because it hasn't been decided yet for July, what the theme is going to be, but it's going to be a lower key month when it comes to your commitment to coming to a workshop. And we're kind of going to take a summer vacation month off. So you make your plans, go have fun, schedule something else for your July 18th, please. And in the meantime, obviously I'm going to be messaging you through Patreon, everything that I think is extremely important for you to know. So you can continue to enjoy your month off as well. And I'm going to see what theme it's going to be. And I'm going to do that personal work for myself. And I'm going to come back to you all in August with whatever it is. And we're going to do our next workshop. And I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also nervous because if this is the message I'm getting about my personal life, a part of me is like, oh man, like, what does that mean? But I'm just going to take it on. <laughs> I'm going to take it on. I'm going to humbly accept that this is the message I got for July and our upcoming month. And I'm going to, you know, take it with humility and do my best and just keep uh, entertaining myself and keeping myself sane by keeping up with the guardian training and pretty much every other way other than a live workshop for July. So that's the only thing I'm not doing. And I'm going to overcompensate because that's who I am in other ways to give you those codes and just make it feel like we didn't even skip July. Like it's not really going to feel like it for you, but for me and my personal energy body and how I'm arranging it, rearranging it this next month, it's necessary. I'm basically needing to level up a little bit, but it's personal work development. Like all of your teachers, you know, all of the school teachers right now, every single professor at every single academic place right now is getting, you know, the month of July off and they're having some sort of personal growth so they can come back and be good professors next month or, you know, in August, September. So has to be done. Fellow professors out there, if you've been getting that signal, may this be your permission slip to do so as well. So we can keep personally developing and being good professors as well and good guardians out there. So thanks for your support again this month. Me and I'm looking forward to carrying on and having a little bit of a different way to approach the work next month even is a nice little refresher for me too, a little bit of a challenge, which is good for me and my brain because gosh, I have a lot going on up there, which is why I do this. I'm This is helping me express my personal strengths. I'm grateful to make these classes. So go enjoy my replays on the YouTube channel, all up there on the playlist, the guardian training playlist on my YouTube channel should be easy to find. And uh, gosh, this is uh, this has been a great one. I really enjoyed this. And uh, let's let's just know that your guardian teaching professor is getting the signal that even she is going to be needing July. So if that is an indicator for the severity of what July is ready for to bring us and our mastery shifts, even if it's just like a celebration, you get some time off and go take a summer vacation, go do that because that's all important. Please do. Thank you. You're going to be in my thoughts and prayers also. And enjoy your daughter's birthday next month. You know, we're taking your daughter's birthday off, Stacy. I see your comments. So everybody, we're taking the July 18th off because it's Stacy's daughter's birthday and we just got to do that. So shout out to her. Love you guys. I'll see you obviously all over social media and in the telegram chat room, please. That's our kind of like our, our, we're on the pulse. That's where our 
our most accurate rhythm is for Ascension Diaries is the Ascension Diaries Telegram chat room. If you can't find that, let me know. It's in my link trees. You can just go onto Telegram and type Ascension Diaries chat with the two little pink hearts. And that's me. It's in my link tree also, which is underneath all of my YouTube videos is my link to all my stuff. You can go to ascensiondiaries.com. All my links are there. You can see a big purple button at the bottom of my page. Click it. That's all my links. Find me. You got this. I know you found much trickier things on the internet. I'm literally trying to make my my approach and my presence on the internet easiest, most reliable, most chill experience. And there's another plane that just flashed me. So I feel like I'm achieving it. And I adore you back. <laughs> and please, I want your feedback after this too. When you're seeing this, when you're repeating this, whatever, I need your feedback in the comments. I need your feedback one-on-one. -on -one. Literally do not hesitate to reach out to me, even it has to be through email, whatever you're most comfortable with the internet. I am fully bred to be internet capable and I'm also telepathic. So if you just need to send me a telepathic supportive message, I'll get it in some sort of sense, but I prefer it to be in written word because you know, it's just a little bit easier on my end to respect the message and know exactly what it is and where it's coming from. And through your written word, I also receive the telepathic emotions. So that too, but just final note, I'm literally seeing so many birds. I don't know if it's some sort of migration day, but I've never seen this many birds moving through my environment today. So today's the day. So look up, engage the bird energy. I'm seeing birds like crazy out my window as I'm recording this. Like they're crazy. I've just been watching them like, what is going on? Like I've been ignoring them, but not. So final note, shout out to the birds, the true real birds, the organic birds. Spread your message, spread your wings, fly, express yourself, reach out. And, um, uh, Give me your feedback. I need the feedback. I'm a growing, growing entity also. I need, I'm only prompting you so you can prompt me back basically. So let's, let's wrap today up. Best wishes to you all. Hold on to those hearts. Hit that quantum self. You're aligning with your most gentle, best self timeline. And I will be seeing you around. Please don't be a stranger. I love you and you're my friend. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being my entire world and giving me purpose. You're awesome. Big hugs to you and your loved ones. Happy. Have a great July. Enjoy the rest of your June and shout out to the fathers, the dads. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My honor. Bye, guys.